I think all of us remember when the idea of dinosaurs roaming the earth was the coolest thing we've ever heard. Whether it was their larger than life size, what they looked like, or how they became extinct, human beings continue to be intrigued by dinosaurs. In 1990, author Michael Crichton provided readers with some thought-provoking subject matter pertaining to advancements in genetic engineering and cloning dinosaurs. A few years later, his novel, Jurassic Park, became one of the most successful and revolutionary motion picture releases in movie history. Using the developing concepts behind cloning and reconstructing DNA, the story's foundation is built upon cloning dinosaurs using DNA extracted from a prehistoric mosquito that was preserved in fossilized tree resin otherwise known as Amber. The story basically leads to a dinosaur zoo breaking down and allowing all kinds of excitement and terror among its guests. However, we're going to focus on the cloning part. Intelligent paleontologists have found many dinosaur skeletons, and they have even found ancient bugs trapped in Amber. So does any of this mean that a real-life Jurassic Park could ever exist? Thanks to amazingly innovative paleontologists and geologists, dig sites all over the world have provided human beings with extensive knowledge about prehistoric Earth. Among the findings is a vast inventory of fossilized dinosaur bones, which have been meticulously examined, providing detailed information about dinosaurs. Under the direction of renowned paleontologist Jack Horner and the influence of Jurassic Park, skeletal discoveries have been broken down with the process using an acid in hopes of finding remnants of dinosaur tissue. To the surprise of many scientists, the excavation team was able to find blood vessels among the 65 million year old bones. But after looking deeper in an attempt to uncover actual dinosaur DNA, it was realized that DNA does in fact have a shelf life, and the dino DNA broke down long before the discovery of its fossilized bones. But what about the idea of extracting prehistoric DNA from a somewhat preserved mosquito? According to geneticists, this doesn't seem like much of a probability either because of any DNA trapped within the ancient insect would be tainted by its own DNA and any other possible DNA surrounding it. It looks like the only thing we'd be able to clone by pulling DNA from a mosquito is just another mosquito. I guess the concept behind Jurassic Park will just have to remain within the realms of fiction for now, but using cloning to bring back an extinct species is another story. Cloning is basically taking a specific cell and implanting it within an empty egg in order for it to grow, whether developing into stem cells or into a living organism. By using something called interspecies cloning, scientists can take the cells of an extinct or endangered species and implant its cells into a closely related animal for development and eventual birth. Some brilliant scientists have even discovered ways to use a similar process to manipulate character traits among presently living organisms to reproduce their extinct ancestors. One example of this would be an African elephant giving birth to a mammoth. It looks like great minds may soon be changing just how we define the term extinction. Due to a cosmic collision between an asteroid the size of Mount Everest and Earth 65 million years ago, 70% of life on the planet was forced into extinction. This included the dinosaurs. The catastrophic impact was so great that debris from the collision achieved escape velocity being propelled back into space. 